I have returned from another wonderful adventure flying Spirit Airlines for the third time ever, and I've got to say, this one, just like the other two, was a great experience. I'd even say that this one was probably the best out of the three because I got to fly Spirit first class. Before we do so, however, let me show you a little bit of a video clip about the grand entrance onto the big yellow plane to show you what boarding as a first class member actually looks and feels like. Always nice to be at the front of the plane in the biggest, most plush, comfortable seat. But now let's talk about what first class actually means, how you can actually fly it if you want to do so, and is it worth it, plus a bunch of awesome details all wrapped up in between those different topics. So let's kick things off by defining what first class is. Does Spirit actually have first class? Well, technically the answer is no. That's because it does not include priority check-in, priority security, priority boarding, a separate cabin from coach, uh, no complimentary food, no complimentary drinks, no free chit bags, and no elevated rewards. That's a lot of no's. But they do have first class seats, also known as the big front seat, giving you more width and more pitch. Now width is pretty obvious, that's just how wide your chair is. Even the chair that I'm sitting in right now has a certain width to it. But for pitch, what that means is basically the point on one chair compared to the same point on a different chair that's either in front or behind it. So on that diagram there that you saw, we were looking at the point of the back of the leg on one chair compared to the same point, the back of the leg on the chair behind it. In other words, as a consumer, what we experience with more pitch is basically the effect of greater leg room. In other words, what is the big front seat? Well, it's a first class seat without first class service. And that definition is about as literal and as specific as I can get. In fact, the actual seats you're sitting in on the Spirit big front seat are kind of like first class seats on American, Delta, United, Alaska, etc. on one of their more dated older cabins because if you look at them, they're pretty much a uh, spec the same type of way. And believe it or not, check out this cool article by View from the Wing where they actually titled this, The Super Weird Reason Spirit Airlines Offers a First Class Seating Option. As you read through the details and a series of exchanges, the simple answer here was that it was simply too expensive to replace the seats. Or for those of you wanting a little more info, uh, to quote here from a, um, an insight from Barry Biffle, who was the former chief marketing officer at Spirit, who then moved on to different uh, companies and is now currently the president and CEO of Frontier, this is what uh, he said. We were converting the airline from basically a legacy type product and Spirit Airlines had what they call a business class. We were literally so broke, we didn't have the $3 million that it would take to actually get rid of it. So they decided to sell the seat without the service. And in terms of a no frills, ultra low cost carrier, perhaps that explanation is the most spirit thing of all time. I also wanna point out that as of 2023, Spirit is actually getting new seats into their aircrafts. And the plane that I was on still had the older seats. So, you know, of course that will be outdated very shortly here as we move into later 2023 and beyond. So for the rest of this video, I'll be showing you the new seats, which are pretty similar but they're a little more comfortable and give you a little more room. Now comparing the big front seat to the economy seat and again these are the newer seats coming to Spirit's fleet. Uh, on the left hand side we have the economy and we see the different uh, uh, seat widths here. For the old plane that I was on they're typically 17 to 18 inches of width but now moving forward they are a little bit bigger on the new ones giving you 17 and a half up to 18 and a half inches of width and the bigger seat, in case you want to guarantee yourself some more comfort, will be in the middle. That's right, the seat that most people try to avoid. As for the seat pitch, which again translates to how much legroom you experience, that is currently 28 inches. And of course, you do get more than that if you get one of those exit row seats. Comparing all that to the big front seat, what you'll notice here.
here is that the seat width is actually the same as the middle seat in economy. But although it's still 18 and a half inches, you do get a much wider seat back for the upper portion and shoulder area of your back. And it actually does make a big difference. Then for your seat pitch, well, that is a lot more. That's 36 inches plus a lot more padding, both under your bum and on your back. The entire seat is much more comfortable than in economy. Believe it or not, I myself was very impressed with how comfortable the padding was on spirit seats. It's almost kind of like the chair that I'm sitting in right now in my home office and this seat is pretty plush all right now for the really big question how can you fly first class on spirit with this really nice comfortable big front seat well here is how you get it. In typical Spirit fashion, you can either pay for it or bid for it. And yes, the pricing does vary. In case you haven't flown Spirit before and you don't know what in typical Spirit fashion means, watch this other video when you're done with this one about whether or not you should fly Spirit and five things you'll really want to know. Now, as you're getting ready to pay or bid for your big front seat, there are a few different times you can do it. For instance, you can pay during the actual booking process, that is, uh, with your seat selection or pay after your booking. So that is going to be a seat change to your reservation. And also there is that option to bid after booking. They'll typically send you an email if that's going to be an option for your itinerary. Let's take a look at how this actually looks during the booking process so you can see what the actual steps are like. What you're looking at here are four separate screenshots for four separate flights. And again, this is going to demonstrate uh, you paying for the big front seat during the booking process as a seat selection. So after you've searched for your flight and put in some basic passenger info, you'll then be able to choose your seat here. And the ones in yellow with the biggest little square icon or rectangle rather in yellow are going to represent your big front seats. So what we have right now are different price points showing you that the pricing does vary based on the route, uh, perhaps even time of the day or the month. I'm not sure all the different variables that uh, Spirit uses to price their seats, but all I can say for sure is that it's not going to be a flat rate for all flights. What we've got for our first example is from San Diego to Las Vegas. That's a one hour, 22 minute flight, and the big front seats are going for $56. Then we have Miami to Atlanta, a one hour, 53 minute flight, so a bit longer, and that one costs $86 per big front seat. Uh, next, we have Phoenix to Los Angeles, one hour and eight minutes, the shortest flight of all three so far, and that is a whopping $152. And to make this comparison a little more interesting, I also put one of the international routes here from Barranquilla, Colombia to Fort Lauderdale, and that one is going to be $78 here. So as you're able to identify, it, has, it seems to be nothing to do with the actual length of the flight either. The shortest domestic route is by far the most expensive. And I will admit that that's pretty typical of Phoenix to Las Vegas. Uh, when I flew that route not too long ago, it was also very expensive. And the prices actually went up the longer I waited. Uh, all those screenshots were uh, basically, I believe for July 10th is what I chose. And I'm filming this on June 9th, about a month early. So the longer you wait, those prices may go up, especially after you've uh, booked your itinerary and then you might get upgrade bid offers or whatever later. Uh, those 152 prices could be 170, 180. Mine was even over 200 when I saw that. And that also falls just perfectly in line with typical spirit fashion too, and that the longer you wait, whether it's checking a bag, carrying on a bag, or picking your seats, the prices do tend to go up. Up. So the earlier you lock in something, typically the better the rate you're going to get. Also do be aware that all these prices are per passenger, per direction. Another way to get yourself into a big front seat is to actually pay after the booking process. That is a seat change. So here are a couple screenshots of one of my flights uh, where I was passing from DFW to Boston. And you can see in the app here, there's an uh, option that says update trip for seats, bads, and options. So by tapping on that there, you'll then be brought to another screen showing you the leg um, and which ones are eligible with a little link next to the right-hand side that says edit. 
Once you tap on edit, you'll then be brought to that same seat selection um, grid to choose whichever seat you want, including big front seats. And then there's the option to bid for the big front seat. This is done after the booking process via email. I received this email, so these are direct screenshots from one of my flights uh, where I was going from Oakland to Las Vegas. And the first part says, hi, Jeffrey. So hi, your name with your confirmation number. Don't miss out on a comfier seat. And then it shows you the, uh, the benefits of seat bid, where you can either go to the big front seat or one of those exit row seats for more leg room. And as much as I'd like to show you what the bid experience is like, I'm not able to do so because by the time I went to bid for that bigger seat on the Las Vegas route to hopefully not pay 200 bucks for it, all the options had already expired. So perhaps other people beat me to it, but I'm just showing you that and the subject line to search your email inbox for your flights to make sure that you don't miss the opportunity to upgrade if you want to do so. Now for some pros and cons. Let's start with the pros of the big front seat. First of all, there is food and drink available, although it is for a charge. And I'll show you what some of the options are from their menu in just a moment here. Uh, second, you also have a large tray table that's located in your armrest. Uh, also, the center armrest between you and your neighbor is really, really big. It's almost like a little mini platform where you can put your drink or something on there temporarily if you want to do so. I'll show you a picture uh, from the in-cabin experience in just a moment as well. Also, this seat itself is really big. Although again, those specs that we saw earlier did not make it seem that way. When you're sitting there, let me tell you, it feels huge. Furthermore, that seat is really well padded, so it's a lot more comfortable and you get a real seat back pocket. Wait till you see the picture of that one, especially compared to economy. And lastly, you have really easy access to the restroom if you have to use it. Also, here's the current in-flight menu for what they call all the smart options for sips and snacks. Uh, this is a PDF. I'll put the link down below in the description in case you want to view them uh, in more depth on your own. They have savvy combos, hot beverages, cold beverages, the bar for some alcoholic drinks, as well as some snacks. Then on the con side, there is no first class service. There's no ability to recline your chairs any further, although Spirit does say that they are pre-reclined for your comfort. There are not any power outlets to charge your devices. There's no entertainment, and there are no free upgrades to get into the big front seat. Again, it's a pay to play model. Additionally, at this time, there's not any way to redeem your free Spirit points for a big front seat. It's only a pay option with cash charge to like your credit card, for example. Hopefully they'll have the option to redeem your points as an upgrade in the future, but I have no insights uh, to be able to say if that will become a reality. All right, let's check out a couple pictures I was able to get right before I sat down and everybody else piled in behind me. So here's the first one. Uh, again, this one's actually a freeze frame from the video that you saw in the intro, kind of low res for that reason. Uh, I apologize, but again, it's the best I was able to get very quickly here. So uh, overall, the uh, seat is quite great. You can see that large tray table inside of the armrest. You just pull it out and it unfolds. You get nice padded headrests, a very well padded seat. Even, I forgot to mention earlier, you get a padded seat belt, which is way more comfortable across your lap. And there's that large center armrest, which is again padded with a little small table in the front to put a drink, napkins, a snack, whatever you like there too. And here's an actual photo I was able to snap quickly as I was sitting down of the real seat back pocket, which was great. You can put your laptop in there, a tablet, um, your phone, snacks, water bottle, whatever you want. It fits pretty much anything very easily. And comparing that to the economy experience, well, you can understand why I'm so excited about a seat back pocket. In economy, you get this little elastic string that's woven around a couple times to pretty much just fit paper. Uh, good luck putting a big water bottle there or your cell phone or anything like that because it'll just fall right out. I'll also point out here that in both images the legroom is great. That's because in my economy picture that I took from a previous flight uh, I was in one of the exit rows. So if you just need more legroom then consider one of those for a cheaper price point than the big front seat. Okay so you've seen what the big front seat is all about but is it worth it? Let me help you make a decision. The big front seat 
can definitely be worth it if you're on one of the longer flights, for example, if you're going from coast to coast or something like that. Also, if you have physical needs where a big front seat will be much more comfortable for you, or if you just simply have a personal preference where you wanna be able to spread out and have a much better in-cabin experience for your flight. That said, it will probably not be worth it if you're on one of these short flights, for example, that Phoenix to Las Vegas route where it's barely an hour long. Also, if you have no need or no desire for it, and if your goal is simply to save money as much as possible, then it would not make sense to splurge on a more expensive seat. With all of that said, I hope today's video really helped you understand what first class actually means on Spirit and what the big front seat is all about to see if it's gonna be a good fit for you and your travels. If you enjoyed today's video and believe it could benefit other people, then please help me get it in front of more people by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on those notifications. Also check out the links down below in the description area to earn some more cash back when you shop online through Rakuten. To get $25 when you open a new SoFi checking and savings account and deposit just $10 or more, plus an additional bonus and an insane APY after you set up direct deposit. And to view my site with some great credit card offers that I've organized into different categories to help you find the cards that you like best. I thank you all for watching today's video. I hope it brought you some great value. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And while you're waiting for it to be uploaded to this channel, always remember that you are great.